On your site assessment clipboard, let's pull down the page and the choice for electrical and take a look at those choices because this will bring up uh, the ability for us to gather critical information about the electrical system that cannot be gathered from uh, visual uh, observation from just a, a Google picture. This is close-up information that's needed on site. Uh, going to the service panel, teleporting to that site, and clicking on the eye always to know what's going on. It says open the right door panel and see the manufacturer inside. And so you would simply click on the door of the electrical panel as we've done here and uh, it brings up answers to a couple of critical questions that you need to do on site. This cannot be done remotely at all. Uh, the first thing we want to know is the service panel brand. Uh, in this case we call out one of many several brands here over on the um, uh, menu choices here. If you click that and bring that down you can see we've got uh, GE, Murray, Square D or Schneider now, uh, Siemens, Cutler Hammer, um, a few others uh, uh, and other if you want. So it gives you a sense of the kinds of choices that can be made. We call it out here. We'll give different names in different scenarios. In this case it's Siemens. So we're going to pull that down uh, and in this case we're going to choose a Siemens brand. List that up. Uh, that information would uh, come from the inside label. Uh, and the other thing is the bus bar rating which is critical. Now we call that out for you here and we make it uh, pretty clear. It's also typically buried inside of the uh, label that you would be able to read inside the panel. So we show you where to find that. We tell you that the bus bar rating is 200 amps um, and over here in your choices for bus bar rating we give you a number of choices, typical ones that you'll find 100 or 125, maybe 150, 175, 200, uh, 225 or maybe larger. In this case it's a good typical size of 200. You'll often run into that but you need to note that. That's critical information to take back from site assessment so that the system designers can know the maximum solar breaker that could be assigned to this system. Also you want to look if there's space for the solar breaker. You're going to take a look in, inside here. Click on the teleport, bring it back. You're going to click on the eye to learn more about that. Um, uh, and it gives you specific code uh, references requiring the solar breaker to be located at the opposite end of the bus from the main so that you can start to look inside and see if there's going to be simple room for you to put the solar breaker in. Now in this case starting out your, your view here of your system we note that there's plenty of spaces for new breakers in fact quite a lot in this particular sim. There's a double pull breaker already up here at the top. Well that's where you're going to want to put your solar breaker but that can be moved by an electrician. So the point is what we give you over here in your choices is some choices for your space. We say yes there's two adjacent slots for a two pole 240 volt breaker somewhere in the panel or yes there's two non-adjacent single slots available for 120 breakers that you could somehow manipulate by having an electrician move those breakers around but you have two non-adjacent singles they could be put together to make a single double pole so once again you do have potential space inside your panel or you might have a case where there's no empty breaker spaces at all. You might going back to your electrical panel you might have a panel that's completely full of breakers in which case the uh, install crew needs to know that they're going to have to bring some twins or some doubles to be able to double up some of that electrical and it's important information for them to have that ahead of time. In this case space for solar breakers we can choose yes there's adjacent slots plenty of adjacent slots for those breakers and once again you can just take a look and see if it's a center fed. That's an important consideration uh, for certain jurisdictions that have restrictions on center fed types of uh, uh, electrical panels. In this case the main breaker is at the bottom. It's not in the center so you can report here uh, in the pull down that a uh, service panel is of the center fed design. We can say no in this case to let them know that there's not going to be any problems with dealing with that. If it was found to be center fed that would be critical information to take back so that the designers could talk to the uh, uh, authority having jurisdiction and make sure that they would approve of having solar installed in a system that has a center fed breaker. And finally we give room to uh, give the serial uh, information, uh, ID information of the device. In this case uh, we have room here to type in what would be the number 
some sort of identification number that might be there for the device. And that's the kinds of electrical information you want to gather in your site survey. It cannot be replicated by a remote site. It has to be done on site by your site survey person. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.